assalamu alaikum to my respected ma'am and my dear fellows i hope you all are well the video is on the topic ectoparasites and endoparasites of sheep and goat so let's start first of all what are parasites a parasite is an organism living in or on and metabolically depending on another organism what are the types of parasites two types of parasites are endoparasites and ectoparasites what are endoparasites endoparasites are those that live inside an organism and ectoparasites are those that live on the surface of the host then what are the causation of parasites goat and sheep become infected with internal parasites by eating worm eggs or protozoal parasites and when the feed is thrown on the ground and when the goats graze in an overly soiled pasture in this picture you can see the parasite infestation clearly then symptoms of having parasites first of all skin burns or rashes appear then weight loss increase appetite or both anemia starts allergies and sleeping problems then first of all we will discuss endoparasites which contain biotic insects hematophagous including black flies table flies fleas mosquitoes and cats then first of all fleas fleas are the blood sucking insects attack domestic and wild mammals including sheep horses and goats etc in region with cold winters the flea population show seasonal patterns with peak during the summer both male and female fleas are obligate blood sucking parasites their only food is blood in this picture you can see a flea structure which contain head then thorax and abdomen and front legs then middle legs and then back legs which are large for jumping purpose then comes to the flea life cycle first of all flea eggs transform into flea larva then into flea pupa and then into flea adult and then transform into the definitive host then comes to the mosquitoes mosquitoes is a group of dipteran insects contain one pair of wings then let's discuss the important genera of mosquitoes three of these are culex aedes and anopheles first of all culex is a vector of numerous viruses aedes is a vector of dengue and yellow fever and anopheles is a vector of malaria and filariasis then you can see a mosquito then comes to the mosquito life cycle eggs transform into larva then into pupa and then into adult mosquito then comes to the ectoparasites which contain nematodes including roundworms flukes and tapeworms so first of all we will discuss roundworms roundworms are also called nematodes more or less long tubular form roundworms contain the digestive system with two openings which are the mouth and anus and the species are parasites of plants and animals including the cattle goat sheep and pig etc you can see a roundworm then comes to the roundworm life cycle first of all eggs pass in the feces then eggs hatch and free living larva develop then larva develop to infective stage and migrate up to the blades of grass then grazing sheep in just the infected larva and then larva develop from immature to mature worms and then female adult lays eggs then comes to the flukes flukes are the parasitic worms belonging to the group of nematodes contain the flat body with oval or worm like form no external signs of segmentation body is relatively short and the length is about 10 cm contain the two suckers and flukes have blind digestive system then comes to the fluke structure then liver fluke life cycle x shed 8 to 12 weeks after infection then into miracidia then into cercaria form then into metacercaria form and then into the definitive host then the duration of parasites in postures larva can survive for long periods even as long as 120 days when weather conditions are cold and moist 
However, when weather is hot and dry, parasite can die very quickly. Then prevention of parasites. First of all, grazing management. Parasite rotation is one way to help prevent overgrazing, which increases the risk of parasites. Then multi-species grazing. Not all species share the same parasites. For example, sheep and goats share parasites, but these same parasites cannot survive in cattle and horses. Then sanitization. Keep and install area clean to reduce the risk of parasite infestation. Then use food containers. Feed animals out of the containers instead of on the ground to reduce the risk of parasites. Then grouping of animals. Group animals based on how susceptible they are to parasites so that they can be treated properly. For example, young animals are often more susceptible than adult animals. Then control parasites in sheep and goats. Anti-helming tanks used in controlling and treating parasites in sheep and goats. Anti-helming tanks like albendazole, fenbendazole, mebendazole, and oxybendazole. Fenbendazole is approved for use in goats and albendazole is approved for use in sheep. This was all about my topic. Thank you so much.